What's going on everyone, this is Dom, and today we are talking about iOS 14, the brand new features, some cool things that I've discovered on here, stuff that popped out at me at the keynote, all those kind of things. I have iOS 14 installed right here on my iPhone 11, so we are going to take a look at everything involved here. As you can see, you just got a sneak peek of all of that. The basic home screen, as I upgraded from iOS 13, actually looks very much the same as it did uh, previously. But as you saw, we do have little things that jump out at us here. A lot of changes visually for the home screen that you might not recognize. And well, we're gonna get into all of that here today. So as you saw, we do have widgets that are available on the home screen. And so you can see right there, I can go ahead and actually add widgets just by long pressing on the home screen, pressing the plus sign up here. And I can throw a widget down on my home screen just like that, kind of scoots everything over and makes like a square block for it. Uh, we still don't have the ability to have like a grid format for being able to move apps around. So you have to have them in specific places. I wish they added that. It, it just seems like a no brainer at this point. I mean, but anyway, the one cool thing that we do have here, aside from widgets, is the ability to remove apps from your default home screen. So let's say I don't want the settings app on my home screen, right? I can go ahead and remove it from the home screen and it allows, it lets me know that it'll be stored in my app library. So I remove it from home screen. Now it's gone from my home screen, which is pretty nice. It's not on any of the other pages, but we have our app library right here. And you can see that the settings app is actually inside of that. And this app library looks pretty clean. So we got categories and folders uh, inside of here. And of course you have the ability to uh, you know, remove and delete apps from the app library and whatnot. But if we wanna get settings back, we can go ahead and open up that app library. I can long press on it. And then you can see here that we can add it back to the home screen. So it goes right back there. Pretty cool feature, I think, uh, to be able to finally delete apps from your home screen and, and just kind of get rid of them altogether. I think that that's pretty cool. Uh, like, like I said, we do have these widgets here as well, which kind of take up a lot of space and I don't know how useful these are going to be. I mean, the battery life widget's kind of nice because you have the percentage there instead of having to pull down uh, the control center to see the percentage. Uh, we have a big percentage view <laughs> at that. And some of them might be useful. Me personally, I don't see myself cluttering my home screen with a bunch of widgets, but let me know what you think in the comments section. You can also go through the widgets and add different sized widgets. So maybe you don't want that small little square, you want a half size or you want a full size widget. That's gonna take up a lot of room on the home screen. Definitely not something that I'm gonna do, but it is nice that they give us three different options here for sizes as far as widgets are concerned. So, that, I mean, that's definitely a win all around. Another cool feature here with the home screen, not only can you hide like these apps and put them over in the uh, app library, but you can also hide different home screens here. So you can see there, if I just tap on the little row of dots there at the bottom, I can then go ahead and deselect different home screens to just kind of clean up my phone. So now you can see that I only have my one main home screen here. And if I want to get back any of the other ones, I can just go ahead and tap on that. And then I can reselect the ones that I would like to show. And I think that's actually pretty cool. Um, I definitely see myself doing that, especially because half the time I'm pulling down and using search right here to find different apps. Uh, so just being able to hide home screens and hide apps, it's just a nice way to clean up the experience on here in my opinion. I just think it's, it's much better all around. So another cool feature that we have coming here with uh, iOS 14 is picture in picture video as we've had on the iPhone. So another cool feature here we have in iOS 14 is the ability to do picture in picture video, which we've seen on the iPad. So if we open up a trailer here, you can see I can jump out of there and kind of scroll about, do my thing, whatever I'm gonna do inside of iOS, leaving that video playing down in the corner. I can kind of move it around and uh, you know, do, I mean, really, I, I don't think I'm ever gonna be the person to watch picture in picture video on my iPhone, but you can restore it back to its full size and then you can close out of it just like that. It's a pretty simple feature. Um, again, I, it's just kind of small for me. I don't think that I'm gonna use it really often on an iPhone. On iPad, it's great, but you know, that's what it is. It's a pretty cool feature to have though. So another cool feature in iOS 14 are these notifications for like FaceTime and, uh, and calls and stuff like that. So if we open up the FaceTime here, you can see that uh, we have the regular, you know, FaceTime, whatever, that's nothing new, but we can go ahead and swipe that out of the way and we have picture in picture. So I can go ahead and multitask, do whatever I want, have my FaceTime still up and running at the top there. I can jump back into it. I'm not sure if there's an ability to pause 
the FaceTime anymore. I remember that we had the, like if you jumped out of FaceTime previously on iOS 13, it would pause it for the other user. Um, but it doesn't look like we have that ability to do that. I kind of like the pause. Maybe maybe that'll be restored uh, in, in like a future version where we have a pause button to just manually pause uh, FaceTime, but it doesn't seem like it's here. And you can just of course hop back in there and then end the FaceTime call. Pretty cool nonetheless. So I know we mentioned this with um, like FaceTime not taking over your whole screen and calls does the same thing here. We just have this tiny little banner at the top. We can click on that to expand it or we can just kind of go away and uh, it'll still be ringing in the background. So if I swipe out of that, you can see the little phone icon in the top corner there. I can still go in and answer that call and we're good to go how we are. I do like though, I will say, let me just call myself back real quick. I really do like how if you have a call coming in right here and you want to expand that, like I said, you can just flip that out and you still have the little call icon there, but the phone stopped vibrating, it stopped ringing and I can get back to that easily just by tapping on that. And I can answer or decline pretty streamlined. So some other cool features that we have here in iOS 14 regarding the messages app. So we have some updates to group messaging here. You can see I have a group message pulled up. Now, if I go and type in the name of one of the contacts in the group message here and I tap on it, I have the ability to mention that person in the group chat, which is kind of cool. I mean, I guess it's useful. I, I don't usually partake in too many group chats because they get really, really messy. But one other cool thing here in this group chat is if I go ahead and long press on this message right here, I can actually go ahead and reply directly to that. And let's go ahead and type in a reply here. You can see that I am now replying in a thread within the group message. So that's actually kind of cool uh, just to be able to have an in thread reply to that specific group message. Now, back in the main messages screen right here, you can see that I have a big D up here. That is not because that is my name or the name of the phone or anything like that. That is a pinned message, which I can easily jump to at any given time. So let's say I wanna pin this group message here. I can go ahead and say pin Dom and Dom, and then it goes up here at the top as a pinned message, and I can easily access it just by clicking up there at the top. So you can do that with any of these messages. You can pin up to nine messages, I believe, up at the top there for easy access. And I think that that's pretty cool just to have like, you know, your favorite messages at the top ones that you access often, or if you get a lot of messages and you have to scroll through your list of messages to find one thread, you can pin it up at the top there, which I think is very handy. And let's just go ahead and pin one more and see how this starts looking. It looks like it fills up a lot of vertical space up here. Uh, it would be nicer if they made it small little icons, I guess. That, that's just my personal preference, but let me know your take in the comment section. Another new feature here in iOS 14 is the Translate app. It's not a new feature, I mean, it's a full-on app. So if you didn't wanna download Google Translate, well, now it comes with your iPhone. And you can see it works pretty simple here. We just uh, go ahead and enter some text here. What's up with you today? And we can select which language we're typing in. We're typing in English here, press go and boom, we get the translation right there. Now we do have uh, the ability to select from multiple languages and we can download different languages here as well. We have automatic detection turned on. So it's a pretty simple Translate app. I mean, nothing special happening here. Nothing that Google Translate didn't do for sure, but uh, it, it's included in iOS 14 now. Another small visual update here with iOS 14 is the use of Siri. So instead of Siri taking up the full screen, we have this little small bubble at the bottom and you can see that She's listening to what I'm saying. Hey, how's it going? And then we have a small little reply down there at the bottom. Kind of hard to see, um, it's, but it's just in line with, uh, with the dock right there. So what's the weather like today? And then we have a little nice widget at the top. So all, all in all, Siri is way less intrusive uh, than it used to be, which is nice because I don't use it very often. And when I do, it's kind of annoying when it takes the whole thing. So I do like the small visual change here. Tell me the weather today. With Siri, you can see that just kind of pops up there or what's five times seven? We have a little thing right there. How are you? We have a little one down here. So it's just kind of very small snippets 
on your screen instead of the whole thing. All right, so we do have some other small updates here with CarPlay. As you can see, I have a wallpaper in CarPlay now, which doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but it is because we didn't have that before. So you can actually go in here and change uh, the wallpaper to whatever you'd like. You can go ahead and set that wallpaper and we back out to the home screen and there we go. We also have some changes with how Siri handles messages. So if I wanna send a message, hey Siri, you can see that we have our Siri icon pop up. Send an audio message to Dom. Okay, recording. Hey, how's it going, man? Great. Send it to Dom. And then we can go ahead and okay. say yes. It's sent. Or send it off. Now, one thing that's cool here is we will have the ability to set our default email client or a default browser, like if we prefer using Chrome over Safari. Now that isn't uh, necessarily in here yet, at least from what I can tell, maybe it is and I just missed it, but either way, a cool feature that's coming down the line, especially if you use Gmail over the mail app. I hate it when I click on email addresses to send a mail and it automatically pops open the mail app. I don't want to use that app. I just would rather have it pop open my Gmail, which I think is very awesome to have that default being able to be set. So that about wraps it up with some of the cool features that I discovered on iOS 14. These are just some of my favorites. This is not an all-encompassing video, but I think that this kind of gives you a good overview of the bulk of the cool features found in iOS 14 here. Like I said, I have it on my iPhone 11 and I'll be testing out the betas as they come along. And be sure to hit the thumbs up button if you wanna see update videos, if there are any massively cool features released or anything like that. And if you're new around here, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. And I really do appreciate all the support, everyone. iOS 14 WWDC keynote was great. Let me know what you think about everything down in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. This is Dom and I will catch you in the next video.